Good evening and welcome to Hairgrove's BBC School News Report. I'm Beth and this is Charlie. Our main story for this evening is the Building Schools for the Future project in Bridgewater, Somerset. This scheme consists of the rebuild of six local schools, four being secondary schools and two special schools. Haygrove will be joining with Penrose Special School, which is an exciting new prospect for the school community. The proposed site for the building is in Skiverton Lane, but not everybody is happy with this decision. David reports. I'm here outside the current Haygrove School. The building has existed since the 30s, when it was originally Dr Morgan's Grammar School for Boys. The building was originally designed for 300 students. Since then, the school has grown rapidly and is now a public state school with over 1,000 students. Obviously, more buildings have been added, but the school is still really cramped for the number of students. One thing which cannot be changed, of course, is the width of the corridors, and there can be massive crushes between lessons. Also, many of the facilities have become outdated, such as the toilets, and the hall is only large enough for one year to have an assembly at a time. In fact, it's now being used for a PE lesson, along with having to be used as a canteen as well. Building schools for the future is what Haygrove and the other schools in Bridgewater need to advance the learning experience of their members, become safer and more environmentally friendly. I think I would um, single out three particular aspects of BSF that I find particularly exciting at the moment. The first one is that I'm very conscious of uh, how cramped our buildings are and how our students have had to learn in conditions that have been far from perfect. Not having, for example, a dedicated canteen, um, some of the subject facilities, the, the rooms are very small, very cramped. So this is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to design a school where there's plenty of room, we have more flexibility of space. And, and this leads me into my second point, because building schools for the future is not just about buildings, as I think you're aware. It is an opportunity for us to rethink what schools should look like. Because for many, many years, schools have looked the same. Children sit in rooms, face in the front of the room, teacher sat at the front. Um, we now start to think about what should a school look like? What should learning look like? When should it take place? Where should it take place? What should the structure of the day look like? And so those are all the questions that we are addressing at the moment with our students. This Greenfield site on the outskirts of Bridgewater is the proposed site for the new Haygrove, but there has been some opposition to building it here. Basically, um, this is all objections from local residents. Many who have got children themselves are parents from children at Haygrove and parents from children at uh, the, the other school that's going up there. And essentially, all these people have different reasons for not wanting to the school to go there, but it seems on the whole that safety is a major concern with parents and local residents. And, and, the, and this is a wildlife survey um, from Somerset County Council, um, and there are 400 rare and endangered species, some critically endangered, that are on that site. The new school is planned to be built by autumn 2012, despite the opposition. David, BBC News, School Report, Haygrove School. Our next headline is the introduction of a new swimming pool in the Chiltern Trinity School site after the demolition of the previous site. Joe reports. This page from the Bridgewater Mercury shows when the Sedgemoor Splash swimming pool was opened by Princess Diana in 1991. Described by some as the heart of Bridgewater, this vital facility is now greatly missed. Behind me is the site where the Sedgemoor Splash swimming pool used to be located. Near the centre of Bridgewater it was perfect for children, adults and families alike. It's now been demolished after it was closed in August last year, when Sedgemoor District Council ran out of money for the project. At the time, councillors agreed that as it would cost £4 million, plus an annual £700,000 to bring the pool up to modern regulations, it would not be money well spent. This has angered many local residents, as not only do swimmers have to travel out of town to use facilities there now, uh, but as the town of Bridgewater is now without a place for children to go in their free time, some fear that this may cause a rise in crime around this area. I think it's the shops are closing down. I think it's dreadful. I really do. I think it's awful. Um, they, they brought so many people into the town. Now everyone's going to Taunton, Western, everywhere else. You know, it's terrible. 
Uh, and I also think as well, all the children during their school holidays all used to go to the splash. What are they going to do this year during the summer holiday? What are they going to get up to, you know? It was a good thing for the kids. Well, I don't think it's right, really. I mean, they bring these things to a close and they didn't even ask the public whether they want it closed or not. They don't give a, such as yourself or me or the younger generation the chance to speak their, or hear the views. Personally, I think it's a great shame that the splash had to close. It was a great leisure facility for the town, for the families. But for us personally, as a business in the town, it brought a lot of people from outside areas like Taunton and Western Supermare. They would bring their kids to the splash and then come and see us and maybe buy some product from us. So for us, yes, it's a big loss and a great loss to the town. Now we've heard the views of adults, but what do local children think about the situation? Um, we don't, like, they don't have any more places to go, like young kids, so they all hang around town. And you have to like drive further to get to the, um, the swimming pool. <laughs> I think it's a real shame for Bridgewater because we used to have a lot of people coming over from all over the country just to visit the splash. The town, the town, Bridgewater itself is lacking now without, without the splash, you know, because that was our main attraction back then. You know, on a Saturday, kids used to go down there, enjoy playing there, but we've we got nothing to do now, really. You know, but it's a great shame. We will miss it. Plans for a new leisure centre incorporating a swimming pool are currently being drawn up. The pool is to be built alongside Chilton Trinity Technology College as part of the Building Schools for the Future initiative and is hoped to be open by autumn in 2012. Do you think the, the new pool um, that is being built will put the heart back into Bridgewater? I think so, because I think the pool is a very important uh, feature, if you like, for a town that's near the coast. I think for young people to learn to swim, to give them opportunities later on in life, um, holidays, anything else they're doing is, is quite important. It's also good for a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and on this site, I think uh, it's easily accessible off the NDR. Uh, it's next to a large uh, sports complex, so you can um, combine swimming with other forms of fitness. Uh, and, I, and I just feel it's an opportunity for us as a school as well to take advantage of a, a swimming pool on our doorstep. Um, I think it's obviously disappointing in the community whenever you, use, uh, you lose a facility that's been enjoyed by so many people. Um, but the reality was the splash was costing the council an awful lot of money to run. And in order to, have, to um, explore any possibility of a new pool for Bridgewater, they needed to secure some savings from the existing facility to put that towards a new one. The future is bright for swimmers in Bridgewater, though over the next couple of years, most will agree that without this vital facility, the town will seriously lack in things to do for leisure. How long now until Bridgewater gets its pool back? Only time will tell. This is Joseph reporting for BBC News School Report in Bridgewater. In other headlines, a Somerset teenager murdered her friend's lover, stabbing him 17 times with a carving knife after a drunken row. Also, a new plan is underway in Somerset, which consists of placing syringe bins in public conveniences. Although Somerset does not support the use of illegal drugs, this project is aimed to make toilets safer. Now on to Emily with the World News Roundup. Hello and welcome to the News Roundup. A budget has been confirmed by Gordon Brown which will be announced in two weeks. This has led to speculation that the general election will be held on the 6th of May. After Britain having some of its coldest winters, an increase of potholes has caused many citizens problems. But the scheme to fix the potholes could cost billions. £10 billion a year is spent on prisoners re-offending after spending less than a year in prison. Around 6,000 offenders are given less than 12 months in prison, which costs over 250 million to look after them. And for the weather, in the next week we will see some sunny spells with some cloudy regions. Unfortunately, the weekend will end with a patch of rain. Hello. So far, this week has been packed with Champions League goals and interesting scorelines. The highlight of Champions League football midweek has to be the 5-0 victory for Arsenal against Porto, with Bentner scoring a hat-trick. Also, at the very start of this week, we saw a disappointing result for Liverpool as they lost 1-0 to Wigan. Tomorrow, we can look forward to the opening of the Test Match Series for England's cricket team as they face Bangladesh. Unfortunately, bowler Graham Onions will be unable to play as he has been ruled out for a back injury. Looking into the weekend and the opening Grand Prix is taking place in Bahrain. That's 
all the main headlines for today. Thanks for listening to Haygrove's BBC School News Report. Now for all of us here in the studio, good night. Good night.